So far we have in the previous videos we have studied uh, several examples of groups and uh, we formally saw the definition of a group. So let us continue this, uh, we will study in this video some properties of groups and some important types of groups. Okay, so let us uh, recall, I uh, will spend 2 minutes recalling. So, G, so if G is a group, remember in, in the other videos I said G is a group under a specific operation. So, let us say under an operation star. So, that means it is closed under star. In other words, G cross G to G there is a binary operation, there exists an identity element every element has an inverse and finally, star is associative. The important examples that we have looked at, I will not explain uh, everything, but z, r, q, c under addition. Q star which is non-zero rational numbers, R star which is non-zero reals and non-zero complex numbers under multiplication, positive reals and positive rationals under multiplication. We also looked at S n bijections. Okay, and I think we looked at uh, 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 roots of nth roots of 1 unity, we looked at rotational symmetries of of an equilateral triangle and we also looked at some matrix groups. So, this is just to recall what we have done so far. So, next I want to study some examples, uh, some properties and different types of groups. So, the first I want to type I want to define is a group G comma let us say star is called abelian it is also sometimes called a commutative group, but we will most of the time use the word abelian. If A star B is equal to B star A for all A comma B in G. So, remember that a group is a set along with a binary operation and we say that it is abelian if it does not matter in which order we multiply or compose the any given two elements. So, and if you recall when I first looked at some examples of groups and I looked at z in particular, I noted that this property holds in z, but I commented there that this is not a critical property for a group. So, we do not ask for it and we just give a new name to groups which have that property. So, Obviously, the examples will include z because addition of integers is uh, abelian. Also, similarly, q r c q star r star c star q positive reals, positive rationals, positive reals are all abelian. Okay, because uh, again I am not emphasizing the operation here because it is understood from the earlier videos. In Z, Q, R, C the operation is addition, it is multiplication, it is abelian. Q star, R star, C star, Q plus R plus they are all multiplication, they are all abelian. So, this is easy, usual multiplication and addition of numbers is abelian, but not everything is abelian as we saw S n 
is not abelian. We specifically saw that S 3 was not abelian in the uh, earlier video, where we looked at S 3 in uh, specific detail and concluded that it is not abelian. So, in uh, actually I should write for n at least 3. Uh, if you look at uh, and I will give this as an exercise. Remember S n is defined for any positive integer. So, S 1 and S 2 are abelian. S 1 is just a bijections of a single element set. So, S 1 itself will be a single element group, S 2 is a bijections of a two element set. So, there will be two such bijections and it will be abelian. Okay. So, this is an important class of groups, they are called abelian groups if the group operation is commutative meaning A star B is same as B star A. We also use the word, we mostly use the word abelian. Okay. And uh, also we have another natural definition, a group G is called finite if the number of elements very natural definition. So, G is a finite group if it has finitely many elements. Okay. So, as you can see here, I have already omitted to write the binary operation because it is not it required for the definition. It is a purely set theoretic notion, a group is finite if as a set it is finite. So, again examples S n is finite. Okay. As an exercise, you can uh, do this. S n has, this is true for all n greater than or equal to 1, S n has n factorial elements. And of course, z, q and so on are the other list of groups. Remember z, q, r, c, q star, r star and so on are not finite groups. Okay. Uh, a related definition, if G is a finite group, then the order of G is defined to be the number of elements of G. Okay. It is denoted by this symbol. Okay. So, G with two horizontal uh, two vertical bars is by definition the order of G. So, for example, order of S n by the exercise I mentioned earlier is n factorial. Okay. So, we only usually talk about order for finite groups because otherwise it's uh, this number of elements is infinite. Okay, so our next I want to talk about so a, a, a important distinction between groups is between finite groups and infinite groups, and we have examples of both kinds of groups in our earlier examples. So now some properties I want to discuss of groups. These are very general things. I will check some of them, leave the others for you to verify. One property that comes in very handy, handy is called cancellation property. What do I mean by this? Okay. So, let us say G is a group okay. and uh, let us say I have three elements in it. So, A, B, C are in G. Cancellation is what the name suggests. So, I, I can cancel elements in the following sense. So, suppose that I have A B equals A C. 
So, uh, here I am writing uh, a times b or a star b really in general, but just for the sake of convenience of notation, I do not put star, I really mean but as you will agree it is easier to write without star. So, I will just write a b equals a c, but when I am talking generally about a group I will suppress the star symbol. So, and I write a b equals a c. Okay. So, then so I have a b a star b or a times b I use all these words so, just it is easiest to say a b equals a c. So, if a b equals a c then the cancellation property says we have b equals c. So, a b equals a c gives b equal to c. In other words that is we can cancel a. So, we, we are used to doing this in uh, school right if you have a b equals a c we can cancel this is ok this is what I am doing but in an abstract group this is a valid operation is what I want to now emphasize. Why is this? So, let us do this first time you are doing seeing this perhaps. So, let us check this carefully step by step. So, what are we given? We have given we have been given a b equals a c. So, I am going to use in the proof now only properties of groups that are contained in the definition. I do not want to use any properties of numbers or functions or rotations any kind of complex numbers anything that I know before I do not want to use I only want to use group axioms or group properties this is what the subject of abstract group theory does. So, I, I have this is an equation in G now I can multiply So, again let me remind you I use the word multiply to simply mean I, ap I apply the binary operation by a inverse and a inverse also let me remind you recall a inverse is this notation for inverse of a. So, if you have two elements that are equal in a group by multiplying by a inverse they will remain equal. Okay. So, if a b are equal a b is equal to a c a inverse times a b equals a inverse a c that is just a set theoretic property. If you have two elements and you multiply by the same element they will remain equal this is the meaning of binary operation. But now I am going to use the by associativity of my group operation. So, this is using associativity. So, I have used the property that we have associativity and I have earlier also used the property that I have inverses. So, remember that that is an axiom of a group in order to even talk about a inverse I need to have it in the group which exists because it is a group. Similarly, I have used associativity at this point, but now because a inverse is a inverse of a this is simply e times b this is because a inverse a is identity this is the definition of inverse. And what is the definition of identity e times b is equal to b this is because e is the identity. So, in other words we have used all the properties right we have used associativity that by that we have inverses that we have identity element and of course, we have a binary operation has been used throughout. So, this is remember what I just I wanted to prove. So, you have a b equals a c implies b equal to c. This should recall for you something that you have done in school or for a long time when you are solving this should remind you solving linear equations. Okay, so, you have uh, met let us say 2 x plus 3 equals 5 x plus 9 something like this. So, he, here if you want to do this if you solve this what do you do you can subtract 2 x 
and subtract 9. So, this will give you 3 x equals minus 6 implies x equal to minus 2. So, this we are used to doing in some sense without thinking a lot whether it is valid or not. It is not always valid and in order to make it valid we have to define proper mathematical structures and a group does that. A group allows you a systematic correct setting where you can perform such operations. Many of the things so adding, subtracting, multiplying, cancelling all these are valid operations in a group. So, this is just a side remark do not think too much about it. I am just trying to justify why cancellation property is something that we are used to dealing with and in the new setting of an abstract group we have it. Once you have a cancellation property we can do some more things. So, a group remember a group always contains the identity element I, I keep saying in all my videos I have, I have been saying that existence of the identity element is an important part of definition of a group. But I have been sloppy if you noticed in earlier videos whether I sometimes I say it has a an identity or the identity, but now I will justify everything by saying a group has a unique identity element. Namely, a group cannot admit two distinct identity elements and hence we are allowed to say the identity element of a group. Why is this? Why does it have a unique identity? So, suppose not. So, suppose, so why? We have to prove this, right? Anything we write, we have to prove. So, suppose that G has two identities. Let us say E and E prime. Uh, note that we have been using the letter E to denote uh, um, identity element of a group. So, E and E prime let us say serve as the identity and at this point let us recall also the definition of the identity element. What is an identity element? It is an element which has the property that when you multiply any element of the group with it you have to get the element back. So, for example, when you multiply E with E you get E this is the definition of the identity element. So, E is the identity element small e is some other element I mean it is some element of the group. So, E times E is E, but what is uh, E times E prime? E prime is also the identity element an identity element of the group E is an element of the group. So, E times E prime must be E because E prime is an identity element this is because E prime is the identity element. E prime is the identity element means G times E prime is equal to G for every G in the group G. I am applying it to E. So, E prime E times E prime is E, but then E times E is also E. So, E times E is equal to E times E prime, but now cancellation property says Remember this is exactly the setting of the cancellation property E E equals E E prime that means E equals E prime as we wanted. So, if you start with true identities they are equal. So, a group has exactly one identity it must have one identity it cannot have two different identities. Also, so this is one property that will immediately follow from cancellation property. Another property any element of G has a unique inverse. Okay. Again if you go back and see the videos earlier I have been sloppy sometimes I say uh, let G be the inverse of G let, let G inverse be the inverse of G or let it be A inverse of G. I, I have been maybe inconsistent in my usage, but again I will prove that inverse has to be unique. So, let us say G is an element of uh, all the arguments here are very standard arguments, but they are critical arguments to understand group theory how to 
work with abstract groups in order to understand and familiarize yourself with these things you have to understand these arguments. They are simple, but if you are seeing them for the first time they will require some getting used to. So, let us say g is an L, small g is an element of capital G. So, suppose g has two inverses say g 1 and g 2. Remember my claim is that every element has a unique inverse, certainly it has some inverse because that is the definition of a group, every element has an inverse, but suppose it has two inverses. So, then we know that g times g 1 is equal to the identity element by definition of an inverse, but so is g times g 2 because g 2 is also an inverse of g, but again cancellation property gives you forget this you, you apply cancellation property to this gives you g 1 equals g 2. So, again very simple, but you conclude that cancellation property immediately gives you inverse has to be unique. One more uh, such thing I want to say, if you take let us say g 1 comma g 2 are elements in a group. So, suppose that g 1 g 2 is E, then automatically g 2 g 1 is E. Okay. So, remember that I am working with an arbitrary group g, it is not necessarily abelian, I cannot in general switch. So, note in general g is not abelian. So, it is not true that g 1 e times g 2 equals g 2 times g 1 for two elements g 1 g 2 of g. It is certainly not true that g 1 g 2 equals g 2 g 1 for two elements in a group in general. However, if g 1 g 2 is equal to E, it must automatically mean that g 2 g 1 equals E. So, inverse, so in other words, if g 2 is inverse of g 1, they commute and this is again an easy application of the cancellation property. Let us take g 1 g 2 equals E, then, so then what do we do? So, if you multiply by um, so, I want to conclude that g 2 equals E, g 2 g 1 is equal to E. Let me now continue. So, g 1 g 2 is equal to E. So, by multiplying both sides by g 1 inverse, what do I get? g 1 inverse Okay, so, I can I do not need this. So, I have this, I am just multiplying this equality by g 1 inverse on both sides, which I can do. Now, apply the, uh, the associativity, this is very similar to the work we have done in proving cancellation property. So, we have g 1, remember g 1 inverse E is equal to g 1 inverse, because E is the identity element. This means, because g 1 inverse g 1 is E and finally, this means g 2 is g 1 inverse. Note that, that means if g 1 times g 2 is equal to E, using group axioms we are able to conclude g 2 is g 1 inverse. And I, earlier in the previous slide I have shown that inverse of an element is unique. So, g 2 is the unique inverse of g 1. So, that means, now let us see what we want to prove g 2 times g 1 to prove The, the whole thing here is to prove if g 1 g 2 is equal to E, then g 2 g 1 is also equal to E. So, why is this true? But because we have already concluded g 2 is g 1 inverse, so g 2 g 1 is g 1 inverse g 1, but g 1 inverse g 1 is by definition of the inverse identity. So, if g 1 g 2 is identity, g 2 g 1 is equal to identity. So, this 
in order to check something is the identity element, it is enough to check the something is the inverse, it is enough to check that product in one direction is identity. And similarly, one more uh, property, uh, maybe I will leave these as exercises for you, very similar to the work that we have done in these things. So, if uh, G is an element of G, then uh, G inverse whole inverse is G. So, this is exercise 1 for you. This means that inverse of G inverse is G, which is actually if you just write out what it means is obvious. Similarly, if G and H are elements of a group G, then the inverse of G H is H inverse times G inverse. So, these are also easy exercises that I encourage you to do, just it they will follow from the definition of inverses and group axioms. Okay. So, and some more uh, notation now I want to introduce in order to talk about multiplication tables. So, if G is a group one can write down multiplication tables which are a compact way of describing the entire group. So, and these make sense really only for finite groups. So, let G be a finite group. Recall that a finite group is a group which has only finitely many elements. So, for example, S 3 or group of so, group of nth roots of unity. These are all finite groups. So, multiplication table as I said is a table which completely describes the group. So, for example, if you take uh, um, the group of fourth roots of unity, if you recall from earlier today earlier in the videos, I defined this group, which is the group of fourth roots of unity. So, every element in this group is a fourth root of unity. So, here of course, i is the square root of minus 1. So, i is the complex square root of minus 1. So, if this group, the multiplication table of uh, by multiplication table of this group, I mean the following. So, I am going to draw a table like this, I will have one row for every element of the group and similarly one row, one column for every element of the group. Okay, so, I am going to draw a grid in some sense. So, a multiplication table. So, clearly this only is possible if the group has only finitely many elements. If it has infinitely many elements, we cannot just uh, contain the uh, information in a table like this. So, in any position, for example, if this position I have i in the row and minus 1 in the column, I will write down the product. So, in this case it is minus i. So, for example, let us just do 1, 1 times anything is itself. So, this is just this minus 1 is minus 1, 1 minus i and i. Here I have i, i times minus 1 is minus i, i times i is i squared which is minus 1, i times minus i is minus i squared which is 1, minus i times 1 is minus i, minus i times minus 1 is i minus i times i is 1 minus i times minus i is minus 1. Okay. So, this is the multiplication table of this group of fourth roots of unity. And if you just stare at this table for a minute and if you forget the first row and the first column only focus on the interior part of this table. So, these are just labels okay, forget those. Each row of the table is just listing the elements of the group. 
no element can repeat here and no element can miss from this list. For example, the group is 1 minus 1 i minus i here you have that in different orders you have listed all these elements. Similarly, each column contains all the group elements in some order. For example, this column here i minus i minus 1 1. This is really a property of cancellation that you can do in a group. Okay. So, because you can cancel no two elements in the in any row or column can repeat themselves. Okay. So, and as an exercise and this is again a very good exercise for you to familiarize yourself with calculations in a group, write down the Remember S 3 from earlier video, S 3 was the group of bijections of a 3 element set. So, if you recall I have used this notation. Okay, there were 3 such bijections, if you go back to the beginning uh, uh, first video, I have completely described each element here, F 1 was the identity bijection, F 2 is the bijection which fixes one and interchanges two elements, I do not remember exactly what it is, but go back to it and write down the multiplication table. So, along these lines that we have done for this group, it will have 6 rows and 6 columns and you have to fill in each, each spot in the table and as a way to check your answer, make sure that it the table that you come up with at the end of the work has a property that this entire group is listed in each row and each column. If some element is repeated then you have made a mistake, if some, some element is missing you have made a mistake. So, make sure that you verify that each element appears in each row and each column exactly once. So, uh, I will stop with this today in this video, please make sure that you do the exercises that I have assigned and when we meet next time we are going to study subgroups of a group and look at more properties of groups.